So let's begin. So even though today is titled Happy Hands, I want to start a little bit higher in the chest region because when we come into this collapsed position of working on a computer, it creates a strain down the entire arm. This is kind of the foundation for how the rest of our arms function. So I really want to start at that foundational area and then I'll, we'll progress our way and spend the bulk of our time on the forearms and the hands. But I really like to begin rolling against the wall for the chest like this. So again, take your alpha ball. If you have a larger ball, if you only have the smaller balls, a little a book and then your standard size ball is a good option or um, finding a corner so you have a space for your head. So we begin at the wall today and it's okay if I don't, I can't see you, no problem. And let's start on the left side. Let's start by placing the ball just under the collarbone just outside of the chest bone or the sternum. And we're just gonna sweep across the front of the chest. And I really love that I have this little corner here because it just makes it really easy so that my head doesn't get crushed or squished. And I'll show you how the single ball, small ball can work there as well. So I can just, if you have a small one, I can take the small one there and my head still has plenty of space. And all you're doing is just shifting your weight side to side, kind of like a dancing action. Letting your arm really hang heavy right now. And then you can move the ball down a little bit. So if you were just under the clavicle or the collarbone, maybe you do a little zigzag across the top, a few ribs across the chest. You should feel yourself come into the pec minor, which attaches from the front of the shoulder right into three of the ribs. And so as you get onto those rib attachments, ribs three, four, and five, you might even feel some tenderness in that area. And so just exploring the upper chest, staying above the nipple line, but moving from chest bone out to the front of the shoulder. Taking a few deep breaths. And then take your ball out more towards the front of the shoulder. So now that you're kind of right in that front of the shoulder joint, right at the kind of edge of the ball, of the ball and socket joint of the shoulder. And then bring your left arm out to the side. This is where you need a little extra space. So my arm is out now like this. And I'm just gonna use the arm now. Instead of rolling, I'm gonna use the arm by making the angel type arms, just like this, like swimming action as I ride against the wall. So I'm using the arm as a lever. Yes, there you go. Here, I'll come take a look. I see a couple of you. Yeah, that looks good, Jen. Bring, unbend your arm a little bit more. So like bring your arm out a little bit more. So not so bent at your elbow. Like you're really kind of creating like a big arc with the arm. <clears throat> right against the wall. I'll show you against the wall again. Lean into the wall and let your arm here. If I do it on this side, They'll sing better. Let's 
starting to feel the arm moved because this chest, this pec has a lot to do with how the arm moves. The only connection, <clears throat> the actual joint from the whole upper extremity to the axial skeletal, like um, axial skeletal system or like the spinal skeletal system is the collarbone. So how this area works has a huge impact on how the whole arm functions. And then let your arm come down by your side. Still keep the pressure in the front of the shoulder, right where you were. And now just swing your arm back behind you. So you extend your shoulder and the shoulder tips into the ball. And so now you're going over in front of the shoulder. Arm reaches back. Yeah, your palm can be facing forward or back. Extend it behind you. Maybe turn it both ways. See what feel, how, see the difference. Leaning into the wall, right where the ball and body meet. So your weight is leaning into the ball. And then come on off. And just do a couple shoulder rolls. Notice the difference in just how the, the shoulder rolls after rolling the front of the chest on the left. Probably already feels a little more mobile in the shoulder blade and in the arm. So now let's come to the other side. Let's come to the right side. So just under the collarbone on the right, just outside of the chest bone or the sternum, we're gonna sweep across the front of the chest on the right side. From the chest bone out towards the front of the shoulder. Taking nice deep breaths. And then maybe going up and down a little bit, just bending your knees and repositioning the ball so that you can zigzag across the front of the chest. You might feel some tender spots in the pec minor. The pec minor is the muscle <clears throat> that tips the shoulder forward and attaches from the front of the shoulder to the top ribs. And when that's tight, it's going to pull the whole tip, the whole shoulder blade and shoulder forward, which is often responsible for impingement. And as we sit down, I'll kind of um, tell you why that's more important. <clears throat> So if you find a tender spot, take a deep breath into it, maybe pause and hold there. Make sure the right arm is really hanging heavy. Few more deep breaths. And then when you're ready, bring the arm up. The arm kind of starts in a field goal position. And then you start to make angel arms. So you stretch the arm up, stretch, pull the elbow down. So stretching the arm up, moving the arm out to the side. And 
Now moving the arm as a lever. Take a couple more rounds. Even trying to pull the arm off, off of the wall. I like to be in kind of a step stance when I do this so that I'm leaning into the ball a little bit rather than being like nose up to the wall. I like to have one foot back if you're feeling like you're right up against the wall. And then now, take the ball right to the front of your shoulder, find the edge of the ball in that ball and socket joint of the shoulder. Find the just right spot, move it around a little bit, find a point of sensation. And then now swing your arm back behind you, extending the shoulder. Making sure you breathe. Keep stretching the arm back. See if you can get it to go back a little bit more each time. Again, I like the lunge position so that I'm leaning into where the ball meets the wall and the body meets the ball. So that I'm kind of pushing into that point of contact a little bit to stabilize the ball there. And then release. Circle both shoulders and feel that change. Yeah, great job. Let's do one more. That just inspired me to do one more on the wall. <clears throat> like I said, the only connection of the whole upper extremity to the axial or spinal skeleton is this collarbone. So how the collarbone moves is really important. And then in the back, even though it's not a true joint, the other thing that really um, assists and drives movement for the arm is shoulder blade mobility. So let's take our therapy balls. You can leave them in the tote if you want the control, but I'm gonna take them out of my tote and I'm gonna place them right at the borders of my shoulder blades. And I'm gonna come up against the wall and I'm just gonna do a little chug on the wall, a little bend and straighten. And if you feel like, oh my gosh, my balls are gonna fall out or they're gonna go wild, keep them in the toe, keep them together, that's perfectly fine. I just wanna get right into the edge of the shoulder blade though, so that I can feel the ball move against the shoulder blade. So maybe try this first. First, just move the shoulder blades up and down, like shrug the shoulders and then drop them down. Walk the feet out a little bit so that you're leaning into it. The more away your feet are, the more pressure you'll have. So shrug the shoulders and Very drop good. them down. Are we doing the balls on the medial um, yeah. line of or underneath? Okay. So right on the inside edge. So you're off the edge of the shoulder blades, not on the shoulder blades. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks for asking. And then you'll just feel the shoulder blades move along the balls. And you'll feel how the whole arm moves. And then you can stay with this shoulder blade motion if you'd like, or you can relax the shoulders. And then you can just bend and straighten the knees. And then you can feel the body move against the borders of the shoulder blades. And all we're trying to do is just free up how the arm moves in relation to the rib cage and the spine. So we want the extremities to move freely. So by addressing here, we're getting right at the foundation of the arm movement. And then maybe here you even decide, I just saw a little move, someone move their arms. So maybe you even decide here, what is it like if I do a little snow angel here with my arms, how does it feel as I move my arms along the wall? Or yeah, or change your position, the arms can come up 
behind your head or even cross the arms and that's going to give you more space and as you cross the arms you might find oh i want to do a little side to side motion just take this time to explore freely i don't want to give you too many specific um cues just options to listen to your body and explore what does it feel like as my shoulder blades sit on the rib cage how does the shoulder blade mobility affect my arm motion and reposition the balls as necessary and we'll take about you know uh, another minute or so here another five to ten breaths either moving with your knees moving your arms moving your body finding that just right motion that your body's asking for right now yeah you can even rotate the shoulders out and in feel what happens as you rotate there's no right or wrong way to do this this is all exploring and then as you're ready find your balls try not to let them drop and then we'll make our way back over to a seated position. Take a couple shoulder rolls again. And again, feel that difference. And now, as we come into the arms and the hands, I really like to keep the balls in the tote. You can do it with a single ball, but I feel like that ball runs wild a little bit. So I'm going to put my balls in the tote. And if you're sitting on the floor, you could use a stool or um, you could use a stool to roll on, or I, put, I stack two blocks often, like if I'm sitting on the floor, because I see some of you are, I just stack two blocks and I roll like this, and that's totally fine. I like to be on my knees generally. But let's begin. I'm gonna start with my left arm again. I'm gonna start with the balls and the tote, and I'm gonna start by working on the flexor surface of the forearm. So if you just put your hands on the palm side of the forearm, just beneath the elbow, if you move your, curl your fingers and your wrist up, you'll feel how in here all engages. So this area controls all of this motion. So let's start up right at the elbow. And I'm gonna take my right hand now as a guide, and I'm gonna just just with the weight of my hands, control the motion. And I'm gonna explore through the top half of my forearm. And I like to, just like when I do my feet, I like to drag and pick up the tissue and I kind of like to plow. So I'm not just rolling over it, but I'm leaning into it. Leaning into it. Yeah. And right now I'm just doing the top half of the forearm. And then as you're doing this, you may decide you, when you find a spot that feels particularly tight or sensational, what happens when you extend your wrist and your fingers back? and then find another spot and move the wrists and fingers back. So I'm actually kind of flapping my hand up and down now, and I'm creating what we would call a pin and stretch action. So now the wrist becomes a driver. And you can even roll as you do that. And then find another spot of sensation. Maybe this time when you find a spot, you can actually contract the fingers and the wrists and feel how it actually pops the ball out from under you. 
and then release. And let's do that two more times. Squeeze your fist, bend your wrist, feel the muscle on the ball contract. Hold that for five, four, three, two, one, and then release. And let's find one more spot. Contract, hold. Feel how that pushes the ball out. And then release. And now let's move down lower in the forearm. So we just worked the upper part of the forearm. So now let's move down a little bit and make sure that you get right into the wrist. So now you're kind of in the te more tendinous area. So you might feel a little popping, snapping, kind of cracking type action as we get out of the muscle belly into the tendon. So start by rolling again. But this also is a really great place to do that straighten, that extension of the wrist so that we can encourage the tendons to glide. And in this area, I find my top hand really useful. That little added compression. So flexing and extending my wrist and kind of compressing the whole forearm. It's like I'm clamping it a little bit. And make sure you roll both directions. Traversing that whole side, so making sure that you get the outside, the middle, and the inside. And then relax for a second. Now, let's come to the side of the forearm. So I like to come to the pinky side, and now this is where the ulna bone kind of sits right into the groove. And here I feel like getting into the elbow is really beneficial. So I almost like start with my hands up and I kind of like scoop down so that I get right where the common tendon, all of these muscles come from one tendon, so I kind of get right into where that tendon originates from at the elbow. Oops. And if you, you just saw me kind of slide off, if you don't push down, you'll find the ball kind of go crazy. So it takes a little bit of that pushing down. And after doing that a few times, you can then work your way up, go up the rest of that ulnar border, the pinky side border of the arm. Exploring that, yeah. I really like to use both balls and the tote for this because I find that that groove is just really beneficial to get the arm to rest in. And then now let's flip the arm again. So palm up now. Again, starting towards the elbow. Let's start with the upper half. Again, I'm using my right hand as a guide. And notice as you're doing this, while you're in this sitting posture working, what's going on with your head? What's going on with your shoulders? What's going on with your jaw? So just notice now while you're working in the sitting position, what's happening to your body? Maybe you start to notice patterns and then working your way down, adding a pin and stretch or a flexion and extension of the wrist now.
You may even curl the fingers as you bend the wrist. And I feel like when I come onto this side, I just need a little more leverage. So you can also stand up if you want. That will give you a little bit more weight bearing or a little more pressure. I'm a little short, so I felt kind of short. And you may, I even found, just found a spot and I even decided, oh, it would feel good to rotate my forearm. So if you feel the urge to rotate the palm up and down, that's a great option too here, rotating the palm down into one ball and up into the other. And then release, go ahead and shake it out. So that was the forearm and now just notice without even dressing the hand yet, the difference in the hand and wrist movement from just moving the forearm. Maybe it feels different going up and down. Great. Now let's come to the other side. Let's see, I wanna make sure that you can still see me well. A different setup today. There you go, that should work. So let's start again on the flexor side or palmer side. And we'll start at the elbow and work our way down the forearm. First, just exploring the upper half of the forearm. Like I said, I like to use my other hand as a guide. It creates a little additional compression. as well as just kind of keeps everything right where it needs to be moving along the groove. And now, when you feel ready, you can try to add that bending and straightening of the wrist. See how that feels. Maybe even rolling as you do it. Just listening to your body. This side might feel completely different than the other. We generally use our hands very differently because we're dominant with one side. So we have better fine motor control with one side often. But then the other side might be the side with um, more gross strength. And then if you find a spot of particular Kind of tightness maybe squeeze your fist bend your wrist contract those muscles under the ball pushing the ball out and then release finding another spot along the forearm and then again contracting making a fist curling the wrist down holding it for five four Three, two, one, and then release. One more spot. Contract, squeeze. And then release. And then now come down into the lower part of the forearm. And now in the lower part of the forearm, you're gonna be in more of the tenderness area. So less musculature, but this is where the muscles break off into multiple tendons. So get all the way down to the edge of the wrist. I like to use this top hand to add a little extra pressure. And 
making sure you get the inside, the outside, and the middle of the forearm. And here you may find a couple of spots where you kind of bump over. And if you should bump over something, that's a good place to do your bend and straightening, your pin and stretching. Okay. And then you're ready. When you're ready, let's move on to the outside. So the ulnar side or pinky side, I'm coming right to the elbow and I'm kind of swooping down over the elbow here, getting the common flexor tendon here that attaches to the elbow. I get it right along the edge of the ball, kind of in that groove as I swoop down. Do that a few times. Feeling where those muscles attach to the bone. And then making your way down the ulnar side or the pinky side. This is really where, um, this is where having that ridge between the balls works really nicely. A single ball works fine too, but I find that it seems a little wild to me. And then when you're ready, come to the back side. This is where I said I stood up before because I needed a little bit more leverage. So here, now rolling along the back side of the forearm all the way from the elbow down to the wrist. I like to break it up into two parts. So I like to focus on the musculature and the meaty part of the forearm first, up higher in the upper part of the forearm. And you may bend and straighten, so flex and extend the wrist again. Pinning and stretching over points of tightness or sensation. And I also like here to do a little rotational action of the forearm, pronation and supination, working my way down the forearm, turning the palm up, turning the palm down. And then making my way all the way down to the back side of the wrist. I really rely on my top hand a lot for guiding my forearm along the balls. And then if you find a spot where you get a little bump or it kind of jumps over, try your pin and stretch. And when you're ready, go ahead and release. And move you around again, more towards the side. So now, I'm going to take the ball out of the tote 
And we're gonna get into the hands now. And you can sit or stand to do this. but I prefer to stand because I can get a little bit more pressure. So I'm gonna come and I'm gonna lean over the ball, ball right in my palm. And as I push into the palm, I'm just gonna start making little circles in the palm. And Jen, this might even be better for you to just lean, kneel and lean on the floor. Yeah, you can do it on the table if you want but I feel like sometimes kneeling on the, and just putting the ball on the floor is great too. And again, I like using my other hand as a guide. It's not necessary, but it's just helpful. And so start making that circle in the palm a little bigger so that you cross all those knuckles. And then see what happens when you reverse the circle. A lot of times it feels like the coordination is not quite there. And make sure that you're not ro just rolling on the ball, but you're rolling the ball into your tissues. So there's this pushing down as well as a rolling. So if you're just rolling, you're not really gonna, if you're just rolling the ball under you, you're not gonna get a lot of benefit. But if you kind of push down, so that you're taking the tissues with you, that's where you're gonna get the benefits. Spreading out the Palmer fascia. This fascia is super thick. And now I wanna go out along each of the fingers. So we're gonna go out, out, first just through the palm, spreading that Palmer fascia again. So I'm gonna go out towards the pinky finger, right to the knuckle, then I'm gonna come back to the carpal tunnel, right back to the wrist. Then come out to the ring finger, and then come back. Out to the middle finger, and come back. First just through the palm, and then out towards the thumb. And now let's do that one more time, just through the palm. Pinky finger all the way to thumb stretching out along each of the metacarpals or those long bone muscles in the, th in the, the palm. Now I'm gonna to start to add in the rest of the finger. So this next round, I'm gonna come out, but then I'm gonna continue so that I actually stretch the finger back now, get some extension in the finger. And then I'm gonna do that again with my ring finger, stretch it back, just my ring finger on. And then I'm gonna do that again, middle finger. Then I'm gonna do that with my index finger. And then I'm gonna do that with my thumb. Then I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna go all the way back to where I started. Making sure you're rolling across the palm all the way out to the finger. And then pause. Now I wanna do a little extra on the thumb. So to work on spreading that thumb, now I'm gonna take my hand straight down like this. So the ball is gonna be right between the index finger and the thumb, and I'm just gonna push right into the ball. And I might even like, kind of like a mortar and pestle a little bit, like I'm trying to like, I might try to smash that ball a little. And then to get in just a little bit more here, try squeezing the ball with your index finger and thumb. So it's almost like you're picking up the ball with your index finger and thumb. Squeeze it, hold it, and then release and see if you can get into that space even a little bit more. 
Do that one more time. Squeeze. Try to pick up the ball with that space like a clamp right between the thumb and index finger. And then release. Push down just a little bit more. And feel the thumb spread away. I'm just doing a little kind of extra movement. I'm kind of going across that space a little bit. Ah, and then I'm going to release. And then now again, just sort of feel the difference. Oh, real, feel the difference now of lifting the hand up and down after working the hand. Great. So now let's go to the other side. Coming to the right palm, press down into the palm. Start to rotate around the palm. Start small. I like to use my other hand as a guide. Doesn't have to be real big, but make sure you're not rolling over it, but you're pressing into it. Then you can start to make that circle a little bigger. Going across all the knuckles. And then go ahead and change directions. Starting small, oftentimes changing directions. So it'll feel kind of odd coordinating that directional change and then start to make it bigger. So you go all through the palm, all across the knuckles. And then now let's go out along each of the rays of the fingers. I like to start with the pinky, so I pull back through the palm. I like to just go to the knuckle first, so I really work on the spreading of the palm first. Make sure you include the thumb. And then work your way back all the way to the pinky. going along each of the bones of the palm. And then when you work your way across and then back, start to add in the finger. So extend, feel the finger extend. And then your ring finger. Each finger really pausing and stretching in that extension position. Middle finger. Don't forget to breathe. Index finger. And then rolling out along the thumb. Feel the thumb extends to. Pausing in each of those as long as you'd like. No rushing, do it at your own pace and then work your way back. As you roll, rolling all the way through the palm. And then release. Now take the ball right to the thumb, push down, push straight down between the thumb and index finger. And then here you might get a little bit of that twisting motion to just get right in there. Really get in, spread that space between the index finger and thumb, squishing it kind of like a mortar and pestle. And then maybe try to clamp the ball, trying to squeeze it. 
Yep, hold that for five, four, three, two, one, and then release. Spreading the thumb a little bit more, maybe pushing it a little bit more. Again, clamping with the index finger and the thumb, engaging those muscles. And then after contraction comes relaxation, pushing in just a little bit more. And then I like to do a little side to side motion there even too. And then let's and then go ahead and shake those hands, let them go. We have one more thing to finish. After doing all of that, after all of doing that rolling, you're gonna feel such a difference when you go to stretch the hands. So I like to do this on the desk. Jen, you're perfect right there, just kneeling forward. Face your fingers towards you and bring your palms onto the ground. Get the palms down and then now try to lean back a little bit. If the palms don't totally reach, that's, that's fine too. And then I wanna hold this for a good 30 to 45 seconds. It feels like a long time. And if you have a tendency to hyperextend your elbows, maybe soften them just a little bit so they're not hyperextended. So that more of the stretch goes into the forearm and the wrist than the elbow. A lot of times we end up with elbow problems because our elbows try to make up for decreased motion in the shoulders and shoulder blades or in the wrists. So a lot of times the elbows will try to overcompensate or it will actually be tightness in these wrist and forearm finger um, finger flexors and extensors that create increased strain and pull on the elbow. So make sure you're breathing. Notice what you're doing with the shoulders, with the jaw, with the head. Keep everything soft and relaxed. And then release. You'll need a little shake there, a little open and close. And then we'll do the opposite. So fingers pointing towards you still, but now palms face up and the back of the wrists go onto the table or the floor. Try to get the whole back of the hands on the floor. And then you and so that you lean over it, and then you can kind of lean back a little bit. And as you lean back, that's when you'll really feel it pull. Pull back of the hand down. So not just the fingers, but the whole hand. Fingers pointing directly to you. Taking about five more deep breaths here, making sure the shoulders are relaxed, the jaw is relaxed. <clears throat> and then releasing. Shake out those hands. Okay, nice work. You are complete. Thank you so much for joining me today.